And I love people who take that serious and in the territory they're a part of, they want to see the glory come. Two of my favorite people that lead us in the 13 original colonies of this nation are John and Cheryl Price. I want you to welcome them and the glory that they carry. Woo, let's welcome them. That was wonderful, wonderful. Woo. <clears throat> I've just been crying all morning, so don't mind me. It's just so good to be in a place where um, you feel the freedom. Because honestly, uh, in our territory right now, we, we are free. But when you wake up in the morning, you have to break through such a restriction in the atmosphere before you can even get out of bed and breathe. You can feel the restriction on the breath. And so I just want to say thank you, Chuck, and everyone here at Glory of Zion, because you have really gotten us through a lot of warfare that we are going through in the Northeast. Um, the Lord has been speaking to me. I have this rocking chair in my living room, and I sit there and just commune with the Lord a lot. I take walks uh, down our street. We live in the woods. And I, I pray in tongues, and I just listen for the Lord to, to speak to me. And he began to share some things with me about this year, uh, what we're coming out of, but also how it's prepared us for what we're going into. And I felt like God said that this was the season of the ten virgins for us, that we were... Um, that we were really gaining the extra oil that we needed should we choose to do that during this past season. We, we could make a choice to do a lot of things. I know I could have in the last nine months especially. But during these last nine months, we have, we have really sought to purpose ourselves to press into the Lord to hear Him, to feel Him. I'm a feeler just like I'm a seer. And the Lord said that we have been filling our extra vessels with oil because we're going to need that oil to see in 2021. You know, in that parable, all 10 of the virgins went to sleep because the bridegroom didn't come when they thought he would come. And he didn't come how they thought he would come. And when they, awoke, when they uh, were awakened at the sound of his coming at an unusual time and in an unusual way, they had, the five had what they needed to get them through the next portion of that celebration. Not the, not the portion of suffering, but the portion of celebration. And that's, where, that's what we've just come through. And the Lord spoke to me this morning, and it really made me cry. I'm so sorry I'm weepy, but I don't know why I am. But the Lord said to me, remember when the prophet <clears throat> told the woman who was in debt to, to use what she had in her house, now listen, we've gained a lot these last nine months, haven't we? We've gained a lot. I've been spending time thanking the Lord for every single thing he's done for me during these last nine months. He's rooted out some things. He's uh, brought me into new levels of glory. But he said, now I need you to begin to pour what you have. And he said to me, remember, I told them to go borrow empty neighbors from their vessels. And unless we can identify the emptiness in our neighbor and bring that into our life, we cannot pour out what we have. And I believe that this is a season where the Lord is saying, I'm going to show you emptiness where you've never seen it before. And it's going to bring prosperity to you and them. It's going to bring prosperity to the nations because their emptiness is going to cause you to pour out everything you have so it multiplies into more than you've ever imagined. And this is the season we've been in and the season we're going into. You know, when God's, God the Father uh, decided to send his son, 
he decided to send the new wine skin filled with the new wine that was effervescent and ready to bubble out. He sent him in the worst, one of the worst times of Israel's history. It was dry. It was religious. God hadn't spoken in 400 years. They were going to church every Sunday doing the same old thing. Demons were sitting in their midst and they just rejoiced in it. They ignored it. There was oppression on every front. The, the uh, government was oppressive. The religious government was compromising. It was cold and it was legalistic. And it came into unity with the political structure and formed this, this thing that was so evil that, were, that was making people serve it rather than them serve the people. It's no different than where we are today. It's no different. And yet, bam, God sends his spirit. And who does he visit first? He visits Zechariah. I wrote Chuck in November and I said, you know, the Lord has just been saying to me, we revel in awakening, we revel in the coming uh, revival, but we don't revel in the warfare that it takes to bring it into its fullness. And, and, and the Lord came at that wicked time and he breathed. Re reach your hand up right now and receive that breath of God that com has come. And he visited the priesthood first, Zacharias. He, and we know all this, but you know, as I was sitting in that rocking chair, the Lord said to me, I want you to read the Gospels and the book of Acts and Paul's letters in a new way this month, Cheryl. He said, I want you to read them as my pattern for introducing the new wine skin and the new wine. And I've been a Christian a long time. I'm, I, just, I just turned 66. I've never read those books like that. I have never looked at them as God's pattern for the introduction of the new. John the Baptist was a new wineskin. Jesus was a new wineskin. The disciples were a new wineskin. And then Paul was a new wineskin. And guess what? Now you're the new wineskin. And you can also be the new wine. We can be both. We can be the new wineskin and we can be what is poured out into those empty vessels. And so Zacharias says, I mean, now we've got to think about this. He's in the priestly line. He was doing his high priestly duty. The same thing that had been being done for 400 years without revelation. Can you imagine coming here at a meeting and not hearing the voice of God? Can you imagine coming here 400 years and not hearing the voice of God? And that's what they were doing. And when he stood there at that altar and saw that angel, he said, no, I can't believe this. The priesthood. And yet the scripture says that Elizabeth was also of the priestly line. Yeah. And guess what? She received the seed and birthed the new prophetic voice that made the way for the new wineskin and the new wine. So God didn't just stop with Zacharias. He found the fertile womb. Now look at your neighbor and say, that's you. Receive it. This is us right now. We've come through this nine months and our womb has become fertile. We are ready to birth what needs to be birthed in this earth realm. Whether it's the prophetic voice that says this is this is the new move of God in its infancy, or whether it is the move, whatever, that's what we're going to birth. And I think it's very interesting that God used two fetuses to recognize the move of God. We don't have to be smart. We don't even have to be born yet. It doesn't have to be somebody that's born again yet. 
and they can say, wait a minute, there's something different here. I've never seen this before. Cheryl, let's pray right now. Any fetus that God has determined for this next move of God, we set a bloodline over it right now in the name of Jesus. We decree it will be protected. We decree that it will be held and it will recognize the spirit of God for the next season in Jesus' name. 